Geography Now España. Si, sí, si. Sí. I don't know why I did this. I just associate everything. Everything is this. It's a pizza. No, it's Spain. It's Spain. Spain, yes. The... We've gotten quite a few requests for this video. Yes. So here we are, spaining it up. I have been to Spain before. I went there about four years ago. I went to Barcelona and I went to Madrid, but that is all I know about Spain pretty much. I have yet to be to Spain, but it's definitely a cool looking place. I'd love to go there. It's so unique place too, just like, because Europe is a very densely populated continent, but then there's Spain too, which is, cities are densely populated. And then there's like the, the like, more arid climate it's so yeah. interesting very interesting place beautiful mountains beautiful coastline delicious food beautiful architecture spain let's see what he's got to say about it right here right now in geography now if you enjoy subscribe like the video we have other geography now videos about a bunch of countries all around the world so uh, if you like geography and you like stuff like that check out the other videos if you also like geography you might like some travel stuff we are traveling the world right now we're actually living in tbilisi georgia at the moment posting some travel vlogs we have one from poland some from vegas and one from bergamo italy so uh go check out that channel watch the videos i'm sure we'll be in spain very soon here yes. we're going to be in europe uh pretty soon so uh we'll have one up so you can subscribe wait for that and watch some videos while you're there heck yeah dude go check it out let's do this Countries geography now Spain. Here we go. Cool. We love you, man. You're cool and awesome. But like, let's be real. You're kind of like the mini boss before the... Okay, I'll just stop right there. Anyway, over 500 million people across the world speak Spanish. And if you include the mestizos, a huge chunk of that population have actual descendants and ancestors from Spain. So it's not just language. It's also like genetically, Spain got busy and made a big ass family across the world. In any case, welcome to the Do I count if I took Spanish three? World, Spain. No. You have to take Spanish four. Mm. Where's like a... Very long Everybody speech you had to do, bars. I know, for that Go class, so I don't want to do it. <laughs> so, Spain. Everything from the freezing glaciers of Patagonia to the freezing glaciers of Alaska have at some point been imprinted upon by the notorious Spanish seal. And, of course, it's always great to have people from the country in the country episodes. And with that, here's Jose and Anna. Say hi to them. Hello, I'm Yay. Hi. They burn stuff. Hi, so where are you guys from? <laughs> I'm Anna, and I'm from Valencia. I'm Jose, and I'm from Catalonia, from a town called Blanes. Uh-oh, Valencia, Catalonia, what's going on? <laughs> Got something about paella, we'll, we'll talk see. about that later. <laughs> All right, so shall we uh, comenzamos? No. No? Uh, well, I'll make it up to you guys with some cervezas. Yeah, yeah. Not close. Okay. <laughs> si, I got it, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're lucky we're here, because if not, you will be f***ing it up all the time. Oh. Wow. <laughs> this is so interesting. This is the first time I've had two hosts on the show at the same time. <laughs> like, we're all like bumping into each other. Oh, well. Now, we've covered a lot of countries that have loose forms of administrative no, division within getting their political regions. But with Spain, dark. I kind of like see it like off a in the corner. The lighting's not on him. Class. Oh, no. It's like, hey, you kids, you stop that. Galicia. Hey, hey, you stop talking to Portugal. Basque and Navari, I don't know what you're talking about. Rioja, you stop drinking wine. Extra Maduro, do you even e exist? Valencia, hey, you stop burning everything right now. Catalonia's trying to jump out the window. What? Oh, get here, you little... Uh, no, but for real, people Spain <laughs> just know who they are and they own it. And with that, let's go to the animation. All right, Spain is located in Western Europe, taking up about 82% of the Iberian Peninsula, shared with Portugal to the west, the Bay of Biscay to the north, and to the south, subsections of the Mediterranean, known as the Balearic and Alberon Seas, and inland the Pyrenees Mountains separate them from France and Andorra. Keep in mind, they even have this small little exclave in France called Yivia, cut off by about 1.6 kilometers of space to the Spanish border on the N154 highway. Up north on the Bidasoa River, Spain also shares an island with France called Isla de los Faisanes, or Pheasant Island, in which oh, the sovereignty that switches? switches every yeah. six months. Those aren't the only countries that border them. What though. an epic the place. East by La Linea de la Concepcion you find this peninsula, Gibraltar, which is actually an overseas Watch territory point, of the UK that they have had since 1713 Does that give you with the PTSD? Treaty of Utrecht. In addition, yes, Spain Overwatch. also has the Plazas de Soberania, or strongholds of sovereignty, historical places in northern Africa that date back to the inception of modern Spain in the 15th century, and they hold on to. They include the two exclave autonomous cities of Ceuta and Melilla, which are effectively attached to Morocco. In addition, there are also eight other islands and one peninsula, known as Peñón de Vélez de la Gomera. The peninsula is divided by a 100 meter wide sand bridge which makes it one of the shortest international borders in the world <laughs> from there spain also has two main archipelagos the canary islands off the coast of morocco and again of course the 
Balearic Islands in the Mediterranean. Due to the positioning of the Canary Islands, this gives Spain two time zones, UTC 0 and plus 1. With that, Spain breaks down a little interesting. The country is classified as a decentralized unitary state in which although sovereignty is vested in one nation, the regional institutions hold their own high degree of self governance and have their own parliaments and presidents. These 17 entities are called autonomous communities or autonomies in short. Delta and Melilla are categorized as autonomous cities and have the right to become communities, but so far have not expressed interest in doing so. The capital and most populous city and highest capital in Europe is Madrid in the center of the country. Like, literally it is. There's even a floor plaque called the Puerta del Sol, which serves as kilometer wow. zero for all the roads and train networks that all radiate roads outwards lead to Madrid. the central hub. And of oh. course Madrid holds the biggest and busiest airport, Adolfo Suarez, Madrid, Barajas International. From there, the second largest city is Barcelona on the Mediterranean coast, where the second busiest airport can be found, Barcelona El Prat International. From there, the busiest shipping port is the port of Argeciras Bay, where over 100 million tons of cargo pass annually. Whoa. Finally, fun fact, some parts of Spain of are actually antipodes of, of New Zealand, which means they are literally located exactly across the entire planet from each other. Interesting. So, Canary Island are not named after canaries, but rather dogs because of the Latin can. Which means dog. What means dog? Like Sorry. canine. <laughs> that was marginally <laughs> interesting. Now, we're not going to dive too much into it because it would take forever, but... Why so many autonomous? Well, historically, Spain had a few major kingdoms before they unified. And this is basically how they separate places that either have a very distinct people group versus places that were are more in sync with Madrid's centralized power. And speaking of which it's forced, Spain is a monarchy. Yes, one of the twelve people monarchies at him in Europe. Smile. Basically, most people will say it all started when Isabella de Castile married Ferdinand of Aragon, unifying the two biggest powerhouses of the Iberian Peninsula. Even though they kind of pissed off the Pope because they were second cousins and did not dispensate their marriage, which led them to cursing the Spanish people for all eternity, but then they went uh -oh. to the next Pope and he dispensated their marriage. So anyway, <laughs> the point is after millennia of going through the Phoenicians, Romans, the Suevi, whatever those guys were, Vandals and Alans, Visigoths, the Moors and Umayyads, modernish Spain started to take shape in the 1400s with a Reconquista or Reconquering. And from there, the story gets crazier. How so? You sure you're not bored with all this history stuff? Random Normally, guy. I How so? Be, but all the pictures in the fast meta talk uh, holds my attention and makes me think I'm learning. <laughs> <laughs> A summary of YouTube anyway, right there. Fine. Any topic can just be like uh, fleshed out into a video as long as it's just super fast paced, yeah. tons of stuff visually, just sensory, just overload. Then a lot of the geography nows that we react to are kind of some of the older geography nows. And this one, he goes into a lot more detail. Yeah. I guess that's why it's so much longer. It's like almost twice as long as yeah, some of the old ones. It's very cool to learn a bit deeper. Yeah. I mean, obviously still it's going to be very surface level, but it's a little bit under this. I think the thickest book of like the geography now Spain can only get surface level. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is very true. There's it's, history. There's a lot of history. It's like when we watch videos and then people are like, uh, this isn't all, this is, they didn't say everything about it. I'm like, oh, really? I, oh. I wouldn't have thought that. Well, if you want, we can react to the full entire history. <laughs> <laughs> You insist. After the Reconquista, the sexy Habsburgs slipped into the royal family because that's what they did throughout everybody in Europe. And when their line ended the House of Bourbon, a French dynasty slipped in. And here we are today with Philippe VI and his daughter, Princess Leonor, next in line. In any case, Spain is a travel hotspot. They are literally the second most visited country on Earth after France, with more than 83 <laughs> million people recorded as of 2019. It's important to know that Spain has third highest number of UNESCO World Heritage Sites at 48. The Autonomy of Andalusia has the most at seven. Damn. Now we all know some of the obvious the history. sites like the Alhambra, Lots of it. the Great Mosque of Cordoba, the Guggenheim, the Sagrada Familia Church. Which has been under construction for like 130 years. It would take way too long to cover all the UNESCO sites, but here's a list of some non-UNESCO sites you guys suggested we mention in the episode. Let's the Royal Palace go. in Madrid, Centenil de las Bodegas, Valencia's Centenil. Arts and Whoa. Science Districts, theme parks like Puerto Ventura and Parque Warner and Texas Hollywood. The Canary Texas Island. Hollywood. What the? Mummies and the Neptune statue. The wooden Whoa, that thing was cool. In Seville, Metropole Parasol. Madrid claims to have the oldest continuously operating restaurant in the world. Cadiz <laughs> is the oldest Cadiz. city. And fake Germany, Mallorca, and fake, fake UK, Germany. Ibiza. Fake Germany. Fake Germany. Whoa. So yeah, that list doesn't even give Spain justice because we need it's to go to Seville and go to Naboo. One part of that the palace. The landscape you can visit Padme. Which brings yes. us to. We can reenact the scene so, since Spain with Anakin has and Padme. In Africa, we definitely could. Ocean, and 
Europe is transcontinental, so we have like many different landscapes. Like we even have a restaurant that cooks food over an active volcano. But we're getting Ooh. ahead of ourselves. Let's go to the animation. First of all, for the continental part, the country is incredibly mountainous. In fact, the second most mountainous country in Europe after Switzerland. <laughs> the country has six main ranges, the Betic chain in the south, the central and Iberian chains in the center, the Cantabrian and Leon chains in the north, and the Pyrenees in the northwest with the border of France and Andorra. In the center, you have the Meseta Central Plateau, a wide highland that stretches wide across the interior. As you can clearly see from space, the northern part of Spain has the most lush green wet zones, and as you head south, the country obviously gets more dry and arid. In yeah, fact, that's Spain so has crazy. the only true changes. desert of mainland Europe, the that's Tabernas crazy. Desert, located in Andalusia, which holds the highest temperatures of mainland Europe at over 40 degrees Celsius. 40 degrees summer. Celsius? Wow. What is that in freedom units? <laughs> freedom! <laughs> Just joke, kidding. by the way. Just kidding. <laughs> We're not quite like that, I wouldn't say. But uh, just taking like the three-hour train ride from Barcelona to uh, Madrid, it's so interesting to just see the climates change because we went from the mountainous beach region in uh, next to Barcelona, and then suddenly, like, you go through some tunnels and you come out and it looks like Arizona. And I'm like, what the? Weird. I didn't expect it to look like that. And just looking out and seeing that, not what you expect. It's crazy too, because uh, Spain is like pretty roughly on the same latitude as uh, New York. Yeah, like New York, or base, or like it's close to where we're from too in Minnesota. Um, and it's so much different. <laughs> Minnesota is just yeah, lots of trees, lots of lakes, and very very cold. So it's crazy. That's always crazy to me too. Yeah, it is really interesting. Located right at the confluence of the African and Eurasian tectonic plates, creating a slew of minor rifts and fault lines. This means the southern part of Spain may occasionally experience earthquakes above six on the Richter scale, and certain areas mostly along the Mediterranean have extinct volcanoes. The most active volcanic area of the country, though, would actually be the Canary Islands, which lie on an interplate volcanic region on the African oh, plate. Explosions. Geologists mostly agree that the islands were created by the plates moving over a mantle hotspot, which bubbled up out of the ocean, much like how the Hawaiian Islands were formed. Wow. Speaking of Islands, the highest we just experienced an earthquake for the first the time. Yeah, it was very but crazy. Rather, the Canary Islands, part of the larger subregion known as Macaronesia, with Mount Teide, which is actually the third highest volcano in the world from its base. Back to the mainland, though, the highest mountain on continental Spain would be Murasen at nearly 3,500 meters high. From there, the longest wow. river shared with Portugal Climate. is the Tagus or Tejo. However, the longest river entirely in Spain is the Ebro. Now, most of the inland bodies of water are reservoirs blocked up by dams on rivers. However, the largest natural freshwater lake would be Lake. Lake Sanabria in the northwest. Finally, Spain has three main climate zones on the continental part. The areas in the south have a warm, dry Mediterranean climate. The central Meseta Plateau has hot summers and cold winters. And the north Cantabrian mountains have a maritime climate with the most rain year-round and snowfall in the winter. So an extra side note, after Malta, Spain is the sunniest country in Europe, like 260 days a year. Wow, 260. Yeah, that's hot. <laughs> oh, that's what hot. Hot. All these rugged lands, Spain hosts a wide range of flora and fauna, differing by region. For example, the Canary Islands, you have the black sand beaches and the Ooh. ancient tropical Lora Silva. It's only found in Macaronesia. Otherwise, oh. in the peninsula, you have so everything diverse. ranging from green hills that look like a Scotland in the north to the shrubby, rocky Arizona-like deserts of the south. Dude, that looks Within like the these bad wide range zones. You have tons of natural treasures like yeah. caves, canyons, and even a river that flows orange and red. Agriculture wise, they are the second largest producer of wine after Italy and the largest producer of olive oil in the world. On oh, fun side note, when they cook, only about 40% of Spanish homes have direct gas lines installed, and the rest usually have gas tanks delivered, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. bombonas. Delivery. Now, we all know that despite having the 13th largest nominal GDP in the world, Spain has had quite a reputation for its rather. How can I put this? Recessive tendencies? <laughs> <laughs> yes, during the financial crisis, Spain was hit hard for about six years during 2008, and in 2014, they reached a height at about 27.2% unemployment. There are Whoa. a lot of factors that went into these, but it kind of went... How can we grow our economy? Well, we need to build a lot of stuff. Okay. What's the problem? The banks. What if we just let the banks report what they wanted and not regulate them as much? That's a great idea. <laughs> Nothing could go wrong. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> and it did. Perfect Always story. a good idea. And due to this lack of accountability, experts speculate that somewhere upwards to one-fifth of the total GDP is somehow tied in with the undisclosed transaction industry black market, second only to Italy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you guys probably have a lot to I'm say about that. To the, no the mafia. <laughs> ma ma mafia Wow, it's like... The the U.S. banks and the 
um, subprime mortgage crisis was caused by the banks. And then Spain's like, uh, let's let the banks here do whatever they want. That seems like a good idea. Yeah, when the uh, the the institute that controls all of people's money can do whatever they want, you that's go, a bit sketch. You go ahead, put it in the black market. Oh gosh, Ooh. interesting. The main port of entry for the European cocaine trade. A fun little fact, did you guys know that over 90% of euros that are transacted in Spain have trace amounts of cocaine on them? <laughs> 90? Like 90? Over 90%, yes. What the? the uh, Valencia science community. But anyway, off of that. Spain is the fifth largest producer of wind energy. Yay, yeah, 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 yeah. that's we good. We have the world's largest renewable energy operator, Iberdrola. We are the eighth largest automobile producer in the world and second largest manufacturer in Europe after Germany. We even have some of the domestic brands like Seat. Which is actually a subsidiary of Volkswagen, but let them have that one. And the incredibly rare limited produce an expensive GTA Whoa. Hispano. What else is in this oh, it's country, very expensive. some of the animal species. And with that, here's Gary Harlow to explain. Right, it's Gary Harlow here. Oh, wow. Europe, Hello, Gary. Spain and Italy usually rank in the top two in regard to like how he's Australian. I mean, they've got Oi. tropical forests to desert, so there's lots of wildlife real estate. The country hosts 16 national parks, the largest one being the Sierra Nevada in the south. Like Wait, Portugal, that's in California. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I made that joke. Iberian animals here, like the Spanish ibex oh. and the wild boar. Oh. However, they're known for the Spanish big five the bearded vulture, the Iberian lynx. Oh. The Iberian wolf, oh. the imperial eagle, and the Eurasian brown bear. The oh, national baby. animal, however, is a bull. Oh. Some might say the Hispanic lion. Some historians claim that they might have inhabited southern Europe. It's in dispute. Lots of reptiles are endemic too, especially on the island regions. The Canary Islands have about five native species of gecko. Blah, blah, blah. It was a very good <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, as a country that's in the path of migratory birds from Africa to southern Europe, there's over 630 bird species. That's Speaking a lot of, of birds. I'm going to migrate out here, fading into the distance. Thanks, Gary. <laughs> now we're about to talk about the food of Spain, but before we do, oh, you baby. understand food. there's a few things. What is food culture in Spain to you guys? What does that mean? What does it entail? Every meal kind of blends into the Mine's following meal. Next one. <laughs> there's like a whole system, right? Mm -hmm. It starts with breakfast, maybe some churros and chocolate and then we'll um, have oh. an aperitivo and then you have lunch and lunch normally ends up with what we call sobremesa that it's like just talk but you stay at the table and you stay at the table you don't have to go out of the, of as, the bar or even if you as americans whenever we're abroad eating it's much different for us because normally this, this, i'll give like a de this is a demonstration of what it's like at us when you're eating at a us restaurant they they come up they're like oh hey what can i get for you and then you order your thing and then as soon as you're done, they walk over and they're like, uh, then they ask if you want the bill. And it's like, it's literally as soon as you're done eating. Yeah. Or, uh, as long as they see it. And then anywhere outside of uh, the US, it seems to be, or maybe not outside of the US, but at least Europe, it seems to just be like, you ask for it whenever you want it. They'll leave you be, yeah. just let you talk. For and a long time. At, at, for Americans, it's the very like fast paced, like, oh, oh, fast food. In and out, and in and out. Anything as quick as possible. Yeah. It's very different. Very different. And when we only get like one bottle of water, we're just kind of sitting there. And then we look around, wait for the waiter that doesn't look at us because he mm. thinks we're just chilling. And, and then we're like, <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> very different. It's nice and chill. It makes yeah. dinner more like, Something you go and you it's an experience. do an experience, an event, instead of it just being like back to what I was doing. You're in a house and then merienda, which is a little snack we have in the afternoon before dinner. So then... that's why we have dinner at 10 p.m. It just keeps going. Never, Never stop. stop. Never stop. We eat and then <laughs> eat again and then maybe go, you know, dancing or something. But <laughs> while you're dancing, you also eat. You gotta do flamenco <laughs> with some... Probably. Fun fact, Spain is one of the countries in the world that has more bars per citizen. And you can even get beer in McDonald's, right? Yes. Yeah, oh. yeah that was so impact when I came here. You can get that anyway, here, can't you? Georgia? here's uh, some food stuff with... Maybe. Uh, oh, guess who's I think back? they had Noah. it. Noah. Food. 
Prior to the 15th century, Europeans had no idea that things like chocolate, corn, tomatoes, potatoes, avocados, or sugar even existed. Through the Spanish trade routes, the rest of the world was introduced to these items, and now you can have things like pizza and fries. Great items. In any case, every region of Spain has a different style of cuisine, and the gastronomy is top-notch, world-renowned. We don't have time to explain them all, but some Top dishes us. you guys, yes. Spanish geography pizza, that every Spaniard will most likely have access to include things like gazpacho, terethnos, churros, coquetas, Bachato, cochinillo, <laughs> arroz a la zamorana, ornato, amon, fideua, cocido, and tortilla. This is not the same as a tortilla in Latin what America. What the? This is a potato and egg dish. And probably the most world-renowned dish, paella, yeah. originated in Valencia. And they are strict with the way that it is made. They hate it when this happens. Hey, can I have some of that paella? I've heard so much about it. Yeah, sure. It comes with extra mussels and shrimp, because that's paella. It does? Yeah. Okay. Sure, whatever, just take it. The true way to make it is either with rabbit or chicken. Otherwise, Valencians will call all the imposters arroz con cosas, or rice with things. Well, rice with things. Oh. Out for you today. Until next time. Don't I recall seeing that in, Madrid, in Barcelona Madrid. with the ones with all the seafood and stuff. It being called cosas and reading that over and over on all these things. different restaurants. Interesting. I never tried paella, unfortunately. I don't know. I always the pictures always showed the seafood, and back then it was like four years ago. I was a little less experimental with my food, so I was like, oh, I don't know about that seafood with rice thing. I wish I would have got it. I did get tapas though. Tapas. Lots of tapas and croquettes. 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 I've only had uh, half of one in Italy. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I haven't been to Spain, so I couldn't have had one in Spain. But yeah, <laughs> it's good there. Yeah. Now. But to eat the real one, go to Valentin. Probably after this, many people is gonna want to kill me. <laughs> I just buried myself. Fun fact, uh, sherry was also invented here, as was the Molotov cocktail. Hey. Which was a role in the Spanish Civil War. Well, let's talk about the Spanish people now, shall we? Now, as I mentioned, there's a lot of different types of people in Spain and they all kind of have their own thing going on. In a way, we have this kind of quiet acknowledgement that unity doesn't mean uniformity. What do you guys think? Like, do you guys generally get along? <laughs> <laughs> yes. But yes, <laughs> yes, there's like these uh, stereotypes things mm -hmm. that oh, he probably is this way because he's from this place, or mm -hmm. he's probably you know. I'll say when I've met Spanish people outside of Spain, we all love Spain and love everyone. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> um, it's just when we're in Spain, we love to you know talk <laughs> to each other. <laughs> yeah, anyway, uh, with that, that let's talk too. about the people of Spain in the ground. Yeah. First of all, America is very about diverse. Million people Midwest, and is the fifth Northeast, most populous country in Europe, South, and has the highest life South. expectancy in the OECD. CD countries. The country is made up predominantly by people that identify as native Spaniard at about 88%. Keep in mind this label is very broad and pretty much pertains to a wide range of people with different physical traits, but mostly with a South European Mediterranean background in their racial makeup. Geneticists also have determined that the average Spaniard, especially in the South, has around 5% North African <laughs> ancestry due to the Moorish conquests that took over the country for seven centuries. The remaining 12% of the country is made up of various immigrant groups that have settled over the centuries, the largest ones being Latin American. Americans at about 5%, North Africans and Eastern Europeans at about 2% each, and the remaining 3% from other places around the world like Asia and whatever. All right, so the official language of Spain is shocker Spanish, but specifically Wait, Castilian really? or Castellano Spanish. Yeah, of course we I thought have Spanish was uh, Spain Spanish dialect, which sounds the one that's in Mexico. Yeah, Spanish. me too. Well, mind, that's where it was invented. Wait, no, they Spanish speak Mexican there. Yeah, yeah true. true. Spanish, as many people from those areas moved and migrated to the Americas. Long story short, What's the easiest way to piss off a Spaniard? Vale, voy a empezar mi nuevo proyecto en mi nuevo ordenador. Elige el idioma inglés, no. Francés, no. Español. Oh. ¿Alguien me puede explicar por oh, qué es no. la cultura mexicana? ¿Alguien podría explicarme por qué? Porque el español de Europa es el español. Hey, it's not Mexico's fault they became a big deal in the Hispanic world. Anyway, on top of that, despite Spanish <laughs> being the national language, they have three other regionally co-official languages that are allowed to be publicly used and published alongside Spanish. So we have Catalan, Galician, Basque. But Basque is a language, like it's its old age. It's Historically, no one knows where it comes from and doesn't have anything to do with Latin or any other language. There's also other minority Romance languages like Asturianese and Aragonese.
means, but very few people speak them and they don't really pursue to officiate them. And there's other offshoot languages like Ladino, spoken by the Sephardic Jewish community. The coolest language fact though is that on the island of Gomera in the Canary Islands, they use Silbo Gomero, which is taught in schools. It's a language completely composed of whistles. Here's a clue. I can't whistle very well. How the do they whistle with their finger in their mouth? You didn't even know that. Yeah, oh, we're all learning. Yeah, we can talk <laughs> about that. It's, it's working. working. Hours, That's it's weird. We gotta move on. Historically, the Catholic faith played a huge role in our uh, identity, despite the fact that today only about two thirds of the country, to some degree, might say that they are very less nominally identify as Catholic. And the less of the 20% of the population goes to church. But for what it's worth, we have the Camino de Santiago, one of the largest Catholic pilgrimages in the wow. world. The interesting thing though is that there is noticeable traces of Maurice Arabic influence as well. Everything from architecture and even the names of cities, for example, if they start with Al. It's even how Andalusia got its name from the Arabic Al Andalus. And today there's even noticeable words borrowed from Arabic in the Spanish language like Tata or Azúcar. That was great. Right. Got it. Now, in regards to Spain's impact on the world, it's nothing short of massive. At one point, we had 35 colonies across the world. And today, there are 19 sovereign Spanish-speaking countries, plus Puerto Rico that all have a story rooted from Spain. Yeah, you guys have a long history of Latin America. What do they think of, what do they think of Spanish people? They love Europe in general. It's like, oh, Europe. So, I don't know. But at the same time, <laughs> they have some other thoughts about that, like we are lazy. Or <laughs> a lot of people, especially in South America, that think of us as very structured or like what Spanish people think of Germans almost. Oh. Which exactly. Which is and really exactly. weird for us. So they kind of think you guys are like the Germans of the Hispanic world. Yeah. Yeah. But then in Europe, we are like. Bankrupt. Not that. <laughs> General, wow. Yeah, no, Generalizing. That, Bars is throwing shots. You know, impact on the world. Yes, we've heard the stories. Colonialism was riddled in lots of tragedy. Many wars and battles were fought. Many died. Diseases were spread. No denying these terrible historical incidents. But, and this might be one of the most hard pill to swallow controversial things I'll ever say on this show, given the current social climate that we live in. But, you have to kind of see colonialism in all vantage points throughout its manifestation. In a weird way, many of the things that you hold dear today and the people that you admire and the ideas that change the world may have never come about without ties to colonialism too. It's a weird paradox of chronological exchanges throughout history. I mean, for example, the wheel and beasts of burden, like horses and cattle, were brought over to the Americas. Remember in the Peru episode, we explained how the only domesticated animal that could remotely help carry cargo was the llama and it could only carry like 80 pounds. Mm. Otherwise, people just kind of walked to get around. See, like that, history kind of has a weird way of showing you that nothing ever is completely what you think it is. And over time, it kind of evolves into something you probably never saw coming. Yes, everyone likes to condemn past tragedies, but you also have to acknowledge that it's possible for a rose to grow from concrete. Like the invention of the first artificial heart in Argentina to, I don't know, Vicente Fernandez and Shakira. That's my little brief <laughs> postulation on the topic. Take it as you will. That will. is just totally saying, true. Before you yeah. that wasn't there. Everything in history had to occur one way or another or else the world would be totally different. Yeah, I mean, Could be better, could be worse, much worse. The the tragedies of even like world war ii it's like oh man that is terrible and we can never have that happen again and hopefully that's what we get from that is that that never happens again things grew out of hopefully. world war ii there were a lot of countries after world war ii that got their independence there mm -hmm. was like the united nations things like that were all formed there's a it's a different world it changed the world forever it could maybe it would have been better if it didn't happen maybe it would have been way way worse you'll never know you'll never know obviously yeah colonialism is bad yeah and um but it happened it'll i mean it'll probably happen again we're in a moment of peace but it seems throughout history the moments of peace don't last very long yeah yeah unfortunately I, but I like that you said it. In a way, it's hard to judge Relative that piece. era with today's standards, and that gets really tricky. Yeah, I mean, I've been doing this for years. And yeah, I, I guess for the peace coming. thing, the and, um, uh, it's peace from where we're from. We should clarify too, because yeah. I think there's like a fact that um, I think I've been born, and the entire time I've been alive, the U.S. has been at war. So relative peace, yeah if you want to call the it pax romana you could say of peace is what we're kind of the stage we're in for first world countries at least like the pax romana in rome was the time of peace 
and there were still border conflicts there was still expansion stuff like that it was just rome never got invaded so it was the time of peace very subjective yes no major world conflicts so in like world perspective relative peace but that probably won't last very long our backstory have so many diverse layers and luckily we made a video explaining all about those various groups and nationalities of spain so just check it out right here click on it let's chill mm -hmm. a little bit and have some fun let's talk we also have art and sports and many other good things so art with the sports part no 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 i am existing here's your trophy this is world war eight survivor <laughs> love it but that's besides the point all right sports in spain so without saying much most of you will automatically default to football yes we all know that soccer is practically a religion did he spain. just say Their soccer national team has qualified for the fifa cup 15 times hosted in 1982 and won against the netherlands in 2010 and of course everybody knows about oh, the yes. rivalry between barcelona and real El Madrid. Which team are you on? But soccer isn't everything for Spain. Fun fact, their men's roller hockey team scored six goals. Roller hockey. hockey. Everybody knows Rafael Nadal's Wimbledon Championship in 2008 and 2010. Their national basketball team has won one world and two Euro basket championships. Aside from all the contemporary sports, Spain also has a rich culture of domestically produced sports. Everything from patanque to canarian style wrestling. I could fight a canary. Oh. I bet you I could be. It. I don't know, man. Those things are fast. The Basque country, though, has the most native sports out of anywhere else in Spain. You have things like Jaya Lai. Oh, I've world. seen that. Old drilling. Wood chopping. That's my sport right I've there. seen. Wood chopping. In fact, I've Basque seen videos of that. It's very interesting. Just it's not that really thing. a sport. It's more of a festival, but they love it. And there's been 15 recorded deaths, but they still love oh. it. And finally, I know you were thinking about it. I was thinking about it. Spanish bullfighting or Corrida de Toro. The sport dates all the way back to Roman times. Bullfighting is kind of seen as a performance art mixed with a sport. The matador attempts to subdue, immobilize, or kill the bull in the arena. The Arabs, the Catholics, the frickin' Bourbons, they all tried to ban it, but it kept coming back. In recent years, the sport has yet again been met with a lot of backlash. In fact, it was completely banned in Catalonia in 2010. Well, I'm gonna probably get out of here, thing. and you know what? I'm proud of this. Torturing bro. animals, Thank probably you, not yeah, good. People yeah. in Spain are pretty active. Which is actually uh, kind of funny considering that you guys have that whole scene the culture thing and you guys are known for being lazy like oh, oh, come on. but i love it i haven't i haven't taken a siesta in two years yeah but that's because yeah. you lived here no but well, I mean, <laughs> we are not lazy guys <laughs> okay also siesta doesn't make you lazy it recharges oh, you it doesn't recharge you no <laughs> <laughs> you wake up worse than you <laughs> wow that's only in valencia wild. That's only not valencia. Very cool. oh, and speaking of stereotypes what about the whole like nudity thing i thought that that was something normal in the rest of the world oh. on the beach on the beach no one pays attention to that like, it's yeah. no anything weird but we don't go naked through the street like right right so in conclusion stereotype debunked nudity is not legal in Spain, but it's okay in some beaches. All right, enough culture talk. Now we got to move on to Hannah. That's her segment. So now here's Hannah with culture stuff. Hi guys, it is good to be back. And remember that you can get a random Hannah t-shirt at geographynow.com. It has my face, face, it has my face on it and it's better than Keith. Ernest Hemingway once said, there is no nightlife in Spain. They stay up late and they get up late. That is not nightlife. That is delaying the day. <laughs> Interesting. They have one of the highest life expectancies mm. in the world. Maybe night parties do the trick. In 83. Any case, Spain wow. has been a front runner in arts and literature. So many people like these have made internationally famous pieces of literature. None more famous than Miguel de Cervantes. Don Quixote. So many world-renowned artists have come from Spain, including the Spanish Trinity, Pablo Picasso, Diego Velasquez, and Francisco Goya. He had some really dark works because he went uh, deaf and the Spanish Inquisition really hated it. But of course, you cannot forget Anthony Gaudi's architecture and surrealist Ooh. Salvador Dali, literally buried in his own museum. Literally my favorite oh, wow. artist of all time. Spain is a hub of many inventions, such as the spacesuit, the stapler, the predecessor to the helicopter, the gyroplane, the wheelchair, glasses, foosball, and the discovery foosball. of the vanadium, <laughs> and platinum. Now, just very quickly, let's talk about some cinema stuff. Explore the political climate with movies like Hans 
Labyrinth, which is actually a Mexican movie, but does explore some an interesting movie. Spanish culture and the Spanish. I don't know if I watched Take it. Take a tour of a beautiful Basque country by watching the movie Ocho Apaidos Vascos. I hope I'm saying that right. Is that right? Good enough. If you want to take a trip back to the Middle Ages and explore Spain's royalty culture, you can watch Juana la Loca. And everybody knows the famous actresses that came out of Spain, like Antonio Banderas, Penelope Cruz, Javier Bardem. Anyways, you get the point. There is way too much film history to get into right now. But if you want to learn more, watch filmography now, guys. Filmography and now. Geography now. Yeah, has a scene, huh? Javier Bardem and or whatever finally, his name Spain was. Is the land of festivals. Just watch Literally, Old Country for No Man. Old Country for No Man. No Country for Old Men. He's freaky in that. In April. Semana Santa. Good actor then. Yeah, very good actor. Is music. Unfortunately, Keith has made his way back from Florida to Los Angeles. I don't know what to do with myself. I thought he was gone forever and he's freaking back. It's here to do the music segment. You guys kind of like him. So here he is. Whatever. Have fun. Keith. Whee! I'm back. I'm back in the studio. My segment kicks not her segment. By the way, everybody, over the years, I've worn Rush shirts many times. Everybody knows Rush is my favorite band. Blah, 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 Rush. Don't sue, whatever. Anyways, so fun fact, and since I have such a love affair with guitars and things with strings, especially G strings, haha, <laughs> but um... <laughs> The modern classical guitar what was actually the? invented in Spain. This is actually a steel string. Spain is one of the very few countries that actually has no words in their national anthem. Each region of Spain actually has really? its own traditional wow. style of music. The most well-known style of music that everybody around the world Flamenco. probably knows is flamenco music. Predominantly flamenco music, did you say? The southern region of Spain and mostly the city of Seville. Highly recommend ch checking out Paco de Lucia, who's a phenomenal flamenco guitar player. I would have to explain flamenco music as a finger style on guitar. So, for example, said acoustic guitar, if you take these two, or sorry, these three fingers and you anchor your thumb, you kind of do this oh. motion here. You can also, you like, use your right hand as a kind of more percussive. In addition, most regions in Spain actually have their own style of dance, which is called the Jota. The rhythms in the dance either are three, four, or six, eight. It's like one, two, three, one, two. Two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's basically the same thing. It feels faster, but it's not actually faster. Eventually, after the fall of the dictatorship, you had a bunch of amazing musicians come out, such as Rocio Jorado, La Pantoja, Joaquin Sabina, Rosalia. She's won like a bunch of Grammys. I don't know. It's just like whenever I watch some like Latin soap opera or something, and I put the chick in the big dress, and he cheated on me. And then I'm just all like, whoa. <laughs> Why is in Spain? It? For me, you guys, I would just like to say thanks to Paul Barbato for flying me out to here to LA. So glad to have you back, Keith. Oh my God, it's Woo! great to be back. Woo! I missed In and Out Woo. and all of the glorious fast food. In and Out. <laughs> Thank you, Keith. All right, and with that, it's time to move on to the friend zone, shall we? Oh, look at all those friends. All right, so Jose, Anna, how do you feel about the way how Spain interacts with the rest of the world? Because of the language, I feel like we might feel closer to Latin American countries for the most part. People think that we are not that good at English. And okay, I probably have shown in this video that I'm not that good at English. I'm sorry, I just no, had a long great. day, okay? You're doing great, you're doing okay? great. <laughs> Harder for us because we are, come from a Latin language. Yeah. Yeah. So a German person is gonna be able to understand and learn faster English than yes. us, so. Obviously, Spain has a huge impact on the world. So first off, of course, in Africa, it's interesting. The area of Western Sahara used to be a Spanish colony, which is now de facto run by Morocco, but with a dispute with the Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic. Although Spain has never formally recognized the SADR, Spain does host a noticeable community of Sahrawi people on the Canary mm. Islands. And on top of that, the whole Ceuta and Melilla thing kind of irks Morocco just a bit to say mm. the least. Nonetheless, they try to keep things cordial and every new prime minister usually makes a trip to Morocco for their first diplomatic mission abroad. Otherwise, they have very close relations with their former colonies. The closest probably being Argentina, as they have the largest diaspora of Spaniards outside of Spain with almost half a million. Wow. And it's well known throughout the Latin world that Argentina probably has the biggest crush on Spain, so the more they get time with them, the better. Cuba and Venezuela because are high Messi up on the went list to, uh, too. Cuba being Spain. the last American colony to gain independence, and they have always been fond of Spain's values. Venezuela specifically has very close ties to the Canary Islands. They even speak almost with the exact same accent, and half 
of everybody on Whoa, the that's interesting. Friends, their family in Venezuela. Back to Europe, though. Andorra is like the Beverly Hills where the Spaniards move when they hit it big and want to hide their money. <laughs> really? However, if we're going to get really personal, Portugal is like the little brother they have shared every moment of their history with. And they love to see him try. Like, whenever Portugal accomplishes anything, Spain is their number one cheerleader. Like, Spain knows they are four times bigger and have a way heavier socioeconomic impact on Europe and the world. So, of course, let adorable Portugal have a Ronaldo or Magellan. They deserve some spotlight. Spain can't have it all. When it comes to their best friends, however, literally almost every single Spaniard I have talked to has said the same country, Italy. It's no shocker. When a Spaniard Italian. and Italian yeah. meet, there is an instant connection. They just share the same South Latin vibe and code of conduct that goes back millennia to the Roman Empire. They can easily learn each other's languages. They approve of the other's food and music. They both laugh at stories of crazy dictatorships and underground mafia drama over a glass of wine. In yeah, the United right States, did. Spain and Italy are the kings and queens of South Europe. All right, and in conclusion, I think you guys should take it away. I'm out. <laughs> we are welcoming, and um, the cool thing about Spain is like you have many different cultures within the same country, so you can live completely different experiences. We like to party. That, I'm not gonna say no. Wrong with that. We love that because we are social people. I yeah. think that's something that we need. A lot of those things I took for granted being in Spain the rich diversity yeah. or, you know, welcoming nature. And once I moved out, which more than 10 years ago, that's when I really started realizing yeah. how lucky we are to be from Spain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, have some real paella. And <laughs> real. <laughs> oh! 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 Thank you guys so much Shots for being in this fire. episode. And with that, stay tuned. Sri Lanka is coming up. Sri Lanka. Next. <laughs> All right, geography now Spain. We got into it. Yes. We watched it. We finished it. The diversity part is so interesting too, because like the size of the country isn't like uh, area-wise isn't super massive. It's pretty no. sizable, but it's not super massive. Like if you were to look at somewhere like in the U.S. for comparison, where we're from, um, usually if you're in like a certain area, it's not super diverse. I don't know exactly what state it would be comparable to, like size-wise. But um, yeah, even like nature wise, unless you go in like a area where literally it changes there, like somewhere in the West, it, it probably won't be. Yeah, that diverse. literally California is probably the only state that's probably that diverse. Yeah. And that's, I would assume it's bigger. Yeah. It's super long. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. It's really cool how diverse it is. The different groups, just the history there all the different kingdoms that existed the moors invasion all of that different stuff that went on made spain the way it is now yes all the influence it's one thing we see here in georgia too uh the influence of past cultures that uh like took over uh with force or when they were like independent and stuff like that like all the different influences combining into like the collective thing and you're like why the heck is that thing there and then it's like oh this history event explains it. Yeah. Like, oh, that's pretty cool. Really cool. Spain. Love Spain. Can't wait to go back and eat some more tapas. Tapas, tapas. Tapas, baby. Hopefully you enjoyed. Check out the travel channel. Subscribe and let us know if there's other Spain videos we should check out down in the comments below. See you in the next one.